cuts under President Trump to be complaining about the tax cuts in the Democratic bill. Well, what I think is there's an ideological inconsistency, right? So that the Democrats are saying, you know, we're for the middle class folks in New Jersey. The middle class folks, despite our high property taxes, the highest in the country, they will not be the ones who get the majority benefit from bringing the salt tax, the salt cat tax back um, as a deduction. It'll be, it'll be folks in the higher income brackets who pay higher state and local taxes in blue states who will benefit from it. So I think what they're, what they're seizing on is the ideological inconsistency, some would say hypocrisy, of saying that you're for these folks, but on the other hand, you know, let me tell you, the average property tax bill in New Jersey is $8,000 a year. So under the current SALT cap, everybody who has the average property taxes in New Jersey can fully deduct them. So who you're benefiting in New Jersey are the higher income folks. Yeah. And that's not the Democratic, yeah. you know, hymnal. So when you're speaking, you know this, George, when you're in politics and you're speaking against brand, people kind of raise an eyebrow. And right. the SALT... Lifting of the salt cap is an against brand Democrat moment, and the Republicans are going to seize on it. it Fair point. Re Republicans will seize on anything. They will seize on the opening of an envelope because they didn't provide, you know, the stamp. <laughs> Here's what Democrats need to do. I agree. They need to pass it. If we spend another month talking about what's in the bill and how much it costs and who's going to get what, we're going to lose the debate, and the Republicans will continue to win by, by just not offering anything. This is what I tell my friends in the party. Get real. It's over. Pass it. And, and go home and tell the, the voters exactly how the, this will benefit them. We spent 20 years investing trillions of dollars in two wars. Trillions of dollars. And now we're hearing about the debt. We're hearing about how much it's going to cost. We're investing in transforming our society and making this country stronger for the future. And that's what Democrats got to go out there and talk at the street level and get, a, get out of this bubble that we're in. That's why you got to leave Washington, D.C. Chris, I may have to come and visit you a little often. You should. Because I found toilet paper and paper towels on sale. <laughs> so I got you, baby. And you, you, it. And some you come up and you bring them. You'll be I'm very, bringing them, baby. Very popular with Mary Pat Amen. if you do. Ryan, when people do hear the, the specifics of the bills, they are popular. I've got to say, there are a lot of ticking time bombs in this legislation. If you look at the child care provisions, it's been fascinating to see a lot of people on the left point Pointing out the fact that this is a provision that actually changes the cost structure of child care. You're introducing new regulations, all of which you can make a case for, good or bad. Regulations that are designed to increase wages, right? But you're only subsidizing people below the median income in state X, Y, or Z. These are provisions that are temporary. And these are provisions that require state lawmakers to pass enabling legislation. There's a huge amount of complexity in this bill. And I think the attitude of let's pass it and then figure out what's in it you know, we, we know I, it's an attitude it. you we see, know, but I've got to say, there are a lot of things in there when people find we, out, you particularly those voters that Democrats depend on, we they're not going to like it. it. You, yeah. you have to evaluate this in the context of not just the daycare provisions, but also the pre-K provisions. And we can argue about whether we should federalize the regulation of pre-K, which I think Senator Cassidy talked about. But this bill clearly is targeted towards working families. And that's what we need to do. We need to send a message that we're about helping working families. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people deferring having children today in America because they can't afford daycare. They can't afford to raise children. We've got to turn that around today. And I want to oh, just oh. say about the SALT tax. I want to say about the SALT tax. It is cumulative with the income tax. So to say, oh, you know, the average is 6000 what your income tax in New Jersey is pretty darn high, too. Yeah. And you add that to it. Well, this and, and, is going to help a lot of middle class sure. families. And we're, we can I, argue, Chris, about whether it should be eighty grand or whether it should be fifty grand. But I think that there's a lot of uh, you, uh, middle class families who are going to benefit in those blue states you, you, for the Well, cap. of course, you're uh, subsidizing in blue states the decisions of blue state governors and legislators to continue yeah. to raise their and, taxes. And, and That's if, what you're doing, yeah, Heidi. So you go that's there, okay. Chris? You want to do that? Yeah. That's fine. But yeah. what you're doing is you're saying that higher taxes at the state level and at the local level are going to be forgiven in New Jersey and, by people in South Dakota. Yeah, and those people, those people be. who pay those taxes in New Jersey subsidize southern to states who get more federal assistance than it, uh, than it's northern for, it's states. It's not so about states. It's, no. It, well, that's all we have time yeah. for today. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll have you all back in a week or two up next. As opioids fuel a record number of over overdose deaths, we'll take a closer look at how one American city is dealing with it and speak to the country's top drug enforcement official.